Hi everyone, thanks for joining us for another episode of Eye on Hako. My name is Kenta. And I'm Joel. And for today's webinar, we'll be talking about the FA400 smoke absorber and the FA430 fume extractor. So let's dive right in. So FA400, it's our smoke absorber. It's a compact, lightweight benchtop unit. There's a on off switch in the back. Uh, one speed, as far as airflow, it's 40, uh, it's about 40 CFMs when used in the uh, vertical position. You can also use the FA400 on it horizontally, like so. And when used in the horizontal position, the airflow is rated at about 20 CFMs. Um, um, one, one quick thing just to touch yeah. up. Since we're talking about the different positions you can use the FA400 oh. in, we also do have a arm stand holder. This is a mounting bracket that in case you don't have enough worktop bench space, it'll actually hold it above the work the workstation yeah, and it'll like absorb this. the fumes that rise up. So I think we'll, we'll show them a little bit of slide of, yeah, of yeah. how that works. I think you guys should be seeing that now. Mm -hmm. um, the 400, what else on the 400? Oh, the filters, the filters. There is a replacement filter that's on the front of the unit. Really easy to take off. This is the replacement filter. They're called A1001s. They're sold in a pack of five, and you can find them through any one of our distributors or through HakoUSA.com. Yeah, and one common question that we usually get here at Hako USA is when do you know when it's time to change out the filter? It's actually two different options for you. So straight out of the box, that filter that Kent is holding weighs roughly about 12 grams or so. It has a maximum absorption of four grams so if after some use you weigh it and it's about 16 grams, uh, it's about time you change that filter out. When your filters begin to, uh, after a certain amount of usage of the filters for the unit, you'll start to see colors start to form on the front of the uh, filter itself. Uh, but why can't I just flip it around and use it? I mean, I only used up one side. You're talking about flipping it from here to like that? Yeah, why not? That is a no-no because what you're doing now is say this is the dirty side and you flip it around. What you're doing now is you're sucking in all that dirt and debris directly into the, uh, the motor or the fan of the unit. So you never want to do that. Once your filters get dirty, just throw them out, grab a new one and set it back in its place. All right. Well, we've been talking about the FA400 this entire time. So let's go ahead and show you exactly how to use this. Uh, but while Kent is setting up, you probably noticed that right in front of us, we've got the Hako FX100. If you're not familiar with the soldering station, this is our induction heating soldering station. And if you're not familiar with induction heating, we actually covered it completely in last month's issue of Hako Tips e-newsletter. This is a monthly e-newsletter from us. If you're not subscribed, we recommend that you do. All right, can I get started? Yeah, go, go ahead, let's go. Jesus <laughs> So, uh, on-off switch in the back of the unit. I turn the unit on. And you want to keep about six to eight inches from your work uh, area to the uh, front of the fan. And let's start off with just, uh, I'm just tinning the tip right now. And you can tell that the uh, solder fumes, I'm not, it's not a, I'm not breathing it in. And the smoke absorber is doing its job. Now I told you there's a couple different ways you can use the FA400. One is vertically horizontally like so and when you use in the horizontal position position it does the same thing it does take away all the smoke away from me so not breathing it in and it does its job there you go looking good when you're done just turn off the unit and there you go. So the FA400, uh, like I mentioned earlier, or I don't know if I mentioned earlier, but it's meant more for the DIY and hobbyists um, to use at home or for at schools. Uh, if you're looking for the more industrial type uh, fume extractor, uh, contract manufacturers, any type of manufacturing, the FA430 is the unit for you. Exactly, and that's this unit that's directly in front of me. Now, as Kenta mentioned, this is a fume extractor while the FA400 is a smoke absorber. The smoke absorber merely takes the fumes out of your face and pushes them away, while the fume extractor actually sucks them up and pumps out clean air for you. 
That's a major difference between the FA430 and FA400. Now, what you see sitting on top of the desk right here in front of me, this is just the duct kit with the nozzle. Before I get into the actual unit, I just wanna cover this real quick. So in front of me, you see that there is a round nozzle. Now, we offer two different nozzles, the rectangle one that Kent is holding and the round one that I have. The round one is meant to sit above your workstation. So as you solder, the fumes will rise up, they'll be collected by this fume extractor, and it'll pump out the clean air. Now, as Kent is demonstrating over here, you'll notice that the rectangle sits flush against the table. So similar to the FA400, you want to keep it about 68 inches of space away from the, the, the nozzle, area. yeah, the duct. Uh, that's, that'll give you the maximum performance out of the unit itself. Now, let me actually show you the unit. So the unit actually sits down below and it actually looks like this. So you take a look right away, major difference between this and the FA400. So, as we take a look here, you'll notice that there's a pre-filter light, a main filter light, the main power light, power switch, low, medium, and high setting, as well as a reset setting. So Kenta, you kind of want to tell them something about this? Yeah, I just want to point out which lights are which, yep. so maybe they can't see. So that's the pre-filter light that he was talking about. That goes on when the pre-filter uh, becomes clogged or dirty. That's the main filter light telling you when to replace your main filter. And that's the power light uh, once you turn on, turn off or on, uh, that illuminates. And this is the dial for the speed control, airflow control, sorry, low, medium, or high. Yeah, so as Kenta talked about the airflow, the great thing about this unit too is that two operators can use a single FA430. It has two ports for it for two different ducts. So with a single duct, you're looking at 147 CFMs. 145. 145, I apologize, thanks for that correction, Kenta. With two ducts, you're looking at 167. But going back into the ports themselves, you can have two operators with one single unit. Um, and let's touch back on those indicator lights that you showed a little earlier. So do you want to talk about the filtration system? Yeah, let's go back to the unit sure. and talk about the filtration system. So this is the main FA430. And once you open up the hood, you'll have access to a filter. And on top of the main filter, there is the pre-filter. So by using the pre-filter and the main filter, and it, actually inside of the main filter, there's the top pleated portion. And on the bottom, there's a carbon activated uh, portion on the, all within the main filter. So one, two, and three, make it a three stage filtration process by using two filters. The actual part numbers for the pre-filter and the main filter is a A1585 for the pre-filter and A1586 for the main filter. And these are standard uh, pre and main filters. And when using the standard filter setup, the efficiency rating on the FA430 is 98% efficient at capturing particles that are 0.3 microns and larger. Now, just to give you an idea of how small a micron is, it takes about 60 microns to make up one grain of table salt. That's one grain of table salt, 60 microns, and we're talking about capturing 0.3. So that's extremely efficient. But there is a way to make it even more efficient. That's right. We also have an optional pre-filter and also an optional main filter. Optional pre-filter, it's called the A1572. And this is the A1573. When these two are used together on the FA430, the efficiency rating goes from 98% to 99.97% efficient, thus making it a HEPA-rated uh, filtration system. Sure. Now, we're gonna get in right to show you exactly how to change out the filters. Um, you're gonna wanna periodically change out the pre-filter as well as the main filter. So I'm gonna jump back over here in Kenta if you wanna pull them out. That's cool. So on the FA400 that we showed earlier, all you have to do was uh, take a look at the front of the filter and replace it when it's dirty. Um, on the FA430, it's a little bit different. Like, I, like we said, there's indicator lights that tell, illuminate when you need to change out your filters. So the pre-filter lamp over here, that'll illuminate when the uh, system sees about 80% restriction on its airflow. And when that happens, that lamp will um, blink at that point. If you had your dial set to medium, what you want to do is turn the dial all the way to the left. There's a reset position all the way to the left. That, what that will do is it'll kill the power to the motor. And at that point, you can open up the hood itself, take out the old dirty pre-filter, 
grab a new one and set it back on top of the main filter. Close the hood back up, lock it, and turn the dial back to your setting, whether it was low, medium, or high. That's how you change the pre-filter. Now the other one, the main filter, for every 10 pre-filter changes, the main filter is um, scheduled to come on. So when the main filter lamp comes on, same procedure, you have to turn the dial all the way to the left, to the reset position. Again, that's gonna kill the power to the motor. Open up the hood, and now since we're changing the main filter, just completely take out the main filter. And what that will do is there's actually a uh, toggle, a switch down here that will reset the, uh, the counter. Okay, once that happens, grab your new main filter, put it back on the FA430, and at this point, you can also check the condition of your pre-filter, make sure they're clean. Close up the hood, lock it, and then, again, turn the dial back to your setting, whether it was low, medium, or high. We actually have a, uh, a debris screen that can help so that you don't accidentally suck up anything. You wanna show them the inside? Yep. This debris screen is an accessory that we have, um, and it's to prevent things that you don't want getting sucked up, like Kim wipes, maybe a face mask, any ring, gloves. So that's the debris screen that Joe was talking about. Um, like you said, uh, it prevents anything large from getting sucked up into the unit. Yeah, and so this is another accessory that we have here. But why don't we actually show you how to use the FA430? And so I'm gonna go right into using the round duct that's in front of me. So I'm gonna turn them on. It's ending that tip for me? Absolutely. So going right in. So just to show you, it's already working as I'm tinning the tip. You can already see it getting sucked up right away. But I'm gonna do it even lower and show you when doing with the soldering application. There you go. Here the round nozzle is meant to be placed above the work area and the rectangle is meant to be placed um, directly on. Oh, that was a good solder joint I did right there. That was, I'm actually uh, proud of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And now I'm gonna tin that sure tip. There you go. Tin it before you put it away. Okay, and that's the FA430. Yep. Uh, so we went over the uh, airflow on the FA430, the maintenance procedures. Um, indicator lights. We also went over the FA400, um, its specs, and it's how to replace the filters on those. Um, just the main important thing is to make sure you use some sort of a unit, whether it's the filtration system or smoke absorber, because you, again, you don't want to be inhaling all that um, fumes directly into your body. Yeah, and if you have any more questions about the FA430 or FA400 that we might have missed or didn't cover, you can go ahead and check us out at HakoUSA.com. If you enjoyed the video that you saw today and the content that we shared with you, you can also check out the rest of our Ion Hako lineup at our YouTube channel at HakoUSA. Um, I think that covers everything. If there was something that we didn't cover on today's episode about the 400 or the 430, you have additional questions, you can always email them to us at support at HakoUSA.com. Um, and again, we'll try to keep these webinars going on a monthly basis. Um, thanks again for watching. And remember, keep your eye on Hako.